first question came from my guy Stone two times, and he actually put that in there. He said, does this mean Mike Evans possibly to Baltimore? He put up 3,800 yards while having Monk in that OC over three years. Maybe a reunion in B more. And, of course, he's referring to Todd Munkin being hired as Ravens offensive coordinator and him having been Mike Evans offensive coordinator with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So he obviously knows how to get Mike Evans involved in a game plan. And a lot of times these players, when coaches do good by them, they love those coaches. And if they see those coaches move and that player, that player may be on the move possibly, they want to say, hey, I know a good thing when I see one. And I know, I know a good thing when I had one. Let's run it back. I want to go to where that coach is because that coach, they took care of me. So could Mike Evans be a Baltimore Red? That would, I would love it. I would, I, would, I, would, I would love it. Y'all know I would love it. I would love it. He would actually, he would be my first choice over D Hop. <laughs> like, it's like a 1A and 1.01A. Like, it's right next to each other. But, yeah, man, like, that would give Lamar the best receiver that he's had in his life. Well, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me slow down there. Because Lamar might not even be the quarterback for the Ravens next year. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but that would be lovely. Ooh, that would be lovely. That would be nice. And you think about the Bucks. The reason why this conversation is even being brought up because the Bucks they 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 facing some issues right now with the salary cap because these Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, they uh they went all in. They went all in uh to go get their Super Bowl. Of course, they brought in Brady. They did a bunch of little things with the void years and stuff. They brought in, well, Gronk wasn't really that much money, but they traded for him or whatever. Uh, and they, they kept Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They brought who Antonio Brown. And they, they over the years, they like, they've been doing their thing to really try to build the best roster. Because they, they like, look, Brady, man, like this dude, he can barely play anymore. But So we got to really do everything to make his job easier. So now the Bucks, they paying for it, huh? They paying for it because somebody's got to go now. Brady retired, so he's out of there. And now it's like, oh, well, hey, uh, we might not be able to keep all these receivers. So whether it's Godwin, whether it's Mike Evans, whether it's both. But somebody's got to go so bucks. Was it really worth it? And I know a lot of people ask the Rams the same question. Was it really worth it to, to push all that stuff to the future, to give up all the, the draft picks and all that salary cap and all that? Was it really worth it uh, just for a Super Bowl? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 every single time. Yes, it was worth it. And I don't want to hear anything else that it wasn't. People talk about, oh, it's, it's not worth it. You got to do all this and you got to do all that and you're going to pay for it in a lot. Hey, guess what? Guess what these teams that's, that, that, that's with the salary cap, they're doing just fine. And they don't got no Super Bowl. So, hey, I'm, if you got to do all that to get a Super Bowl, do it. Do it. Every time. I'm, I'm with it all day, man. Because the Super Bowl is it's once every year. Playoffs come every year for a lot of teams. Uh, but the Super Bowl is only one winner. There's, what, 16 playoff teams? Because it's eight, it's eight or seven. Is it 14 or 16? I forget now. But regardless of whatever it is, it's only one Super Bowl winner every year. And if you have an opportunity to do Anyway, back to the whole Mike Evans thing. I, I, I would love it. Um, I, I, I really would uh, Will it happen? I don't see it happening I, I really don't I do think that Todd Munkin being there Increases whatever small chance That it did have of happening But I just don't see Ravens vision like that I don't see the Ravens Looking at a Mike Evans Who's already under contract And having to give up assets to trade for him Because he's a top receiver So you would have to give up real good assets to trade for him Draft capital or whatnot. I don't see the Ravens doing that I don't. Um, I think it will be worth it, but I, I just don't see them doing that uh, because they've never really been a team to trade for a top receiver. And maybe maybe they just got burned. Maybe they like, you know what? We remember when, when we traded for T.O. and he shut it down. That boy, <laughs> that boy said, Ravens, no, get me out of here. Because that was with Kyle Bola, I think. But he said, no, I ain't doing, no, you, I ain't got, no, no thanks. He 
shut that down so fast. Um, and yeah, they ain't traded for a top receiver since, right? Wow. Maybe maybe that's the root of all of this. Now that I really think about it, that's that's what really started the Ravens. Like we ain't getting no top receiver like ever. Um, but anyway, um, I just I know that, that again. There's been talk about Mike Evans. There's been talk about DeAndre Hopkins. And again, I don't think either one of those happens. I would love if either one did, but I just I don't see it because the Ravens don't operate like that. They don't get top receivers with the Ravens. Uh, now they'll have. A new offense that will hopefully feature receivers more. Um, but I still don't think they're going to get one of the top guys. I hope they do, but I don't see it happening. Um, I'm holding out hope for but my expectations is that it's not going to go down. Uh, and then something that we mentioned before, too, if you have to trade for one of those guys. I mean, it's doable. So it's not an excuse as to why they shouldn't do it or can't because they can. But. The Ravens, I'm sure they will look at it too. Like, hey, if we trade for one of those guys, especially on offense, uh, we got to rework that contract and all that. But if it's a free agent, then you could come to the terms of the contract. You ain't got to do all this reworking and whatnot. So, I mean, we'll see. But, again, I think Munkin being here and him having had success with Mike Evans previously, I think it does slightly increase any tiny chance that the Baltimore Ravens had or have uh, of possibly – getting him but do i think it's gonna happen uh yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it well he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean you too team keep it clean you see my boy he like gotta make Next question came from my guy Juan G Who's been a patron for five months So I appreciate it He said man The Georgia highlights are fire There's something about Stetson Bennett I really like He throws a good deep ball And has some good runs That offense is really fun to watch The run, the pass, that defense Could you see Bennett And some of those players in Baltimore Man I'm definitely interested And excited Uh oh Hold up now <laughs> Whoa you, Whoa Hold up now Like I know we got Munkin I know that was Stetson Bennett's offensive court. Hold up now Like uh, are you jumping on the Stetson Bennett train to be the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens? It sounds like you are. And that's a real possibility. But um, I, ugh, oof. It's, it's, it's obviously a possibility, especially offensive players that come from Georgia because they got the offensive coordinator now. Like you look at uh, David Ajabo um, from Michigan. That's where uh, Mike McDonald was. So they, they, they picked him up or they drafted him, I mean. Um, but I, I, I do think it's a, Especially if, if Stetson Bennett went undrafted And depending on what happens with Tyler Huntley They go ahead and place that tender on him um, But it, I, I think it could happen it, it is a real possibility that it could happen Especially if he goes, if he goes undrafted Then I'm, I'm going to just call it right then and there I'm going to say hey if he, if he don't get drafted he's going to the Ravens Like straight up he's going to the Ravens um, Because they will bring him on And be like oh he can help install the playbook And what he can help teach the guys I mean he's like he's a veteran in the NFL Like I owe it, but anyway nah, it's, it's all good man But um, No nah, I, I think it, I think that is a real possibility uh, Depending on what happens with him uh, This for As QB1 no But as them to pick him up As sort of their undrafted quarterback of the year Because they, they've been doing it every year I, I think it's a real chance. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, "What's up, in Raven? It's your boy Raven Pride. I just watched a video you posted, and it's a shame that people don't understand the time and effort that goes into help fans like myself stay updated, not only on the Ravens but the NFL in general." Uh, I say to you with my heart, my brother, you are much appreciated by the real Team Keep It Clean family, and don't ever forget that. Uh, as you remember, when I had my COVID, it was Team Keep It Clean family that uh, sent out sent shout outs, uh, goodwill to the channel. Uh, so this is family and nothing can tear us apart God bless you and your family and team keep it clean Yeah, I appreciate that Raven Pride Thank you man Thank you And, and yeah with, with, with all that I mean it is what it is People people gonna be people And, and that's um, there, There's great people There's amazing people And there's not so amazing people And, and, and really like I, I don't wanna call somebody not an amazing person Cause I'm sure they are Even if they talk, talk bad about me or whoever else I'm sure they're still an amazing person But I'm sure they probably just Uh a lot of times what I find it is is misdirected anger because people 
are dealing with stuff they they dealing with their own personal frustrations uh and, and usually in their personal lives and sports uh sports football whatever it can it can sort of serve as an escape for them for for a lot of people from whatever they got going on in their personal lives and them so if if there's a, a topic especially a strong topic Lamar Jackson whatever it may be with the Ravens it's a, it's a strong topic that they feel strongly about but they don't feel the same way that you feel about it and they may be like oh man this guy da, 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 da. he's this and that he da, 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 da. when when in reality they're dealing with their own frustrations in their personal lives and they projecting it on the NFL topics and whatnot and all that frustration is coming out against you and it ain't got nothing to do with you but since they like all right well I don't agree with what this person said. You know, I, let me take it to disrespectful route. That's that's what it usually is. Usually, something that people got going on. So that's why try try not to get offended from that stuff. It's unfortunate. Again, a lot of stuff is tasteless, is disrespectful, whatnot. But try not to get offended because that's usually nine point nine 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 times out of ten. That's usually what it is. It's usually what it is. Um, so you you feel for people, man, because uh, like we talk about, man, a lot. Uh, so many people going through so many different things. Everybody got something that they're dealing with. Everybody does. Everybody. Um, and you just you don't know what people are going through. You don't know. Uh, you don't know what somebody on the opposite end of that avatar or that that YouTube that profile picture. You don't know what they're going through. So try to be good to people. Try to. Um, it can be tough because not everybody is good to you. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. People, cause people are nasty, man. But try to be good to people, man. Um, cause again, that they 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 facing their own issues. Cause again, cause I, a lot of times when I, th- I think about it, and I mentioned it in a video too yesterday, I'm like, man, like these these are like people with with kids. These are grown people. They be married. to grown people with kids, and they get on the internet and talk bad about people, make pictures and videos about them. And this is it's it's the craziest thing when you think about that. Like grown people with children, with husbands, wives, whatever. And it's like, whoa, that's that's crazy. That's crazy to me. And then on top of that, and then it's like you think, like they obvious, I, I don't think their thinking is like long term with this. But then you think about it like, how would you feel if your kids did that to somebody else? But then on the flip side, how would you feel if somebody did that about your kid? I don't think they think about stuff like that. They don't. They don't because what you're doing, you're setting an example for your child. You set an example. Children, like you can tell them everything in the world. You can tell them this, you can tell them that, and they remember this stuff, but what they really watch is your actions. They watch what you do. Forget about what you said. What you do is what they go by. That's everything that they go by. And there will be times when if you say for you telling them one thing and they'll be like oh but mom but dad but you did this and that and you could be like oh I, yeah i did they go by actions so i don't think these people that do stuff like that i don't think they think about stuff like that and i get it because because they may be angry again misdirected anger they may be angry about whatever so and when you're angry a lot of times you're not thinking long term you're not thinking about the 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 the, the effects of whatever you're doing could cause you're not thinking about what long-term effects it could, that could happen as a result from you're not thinking about that so you just got your your, your misdirected anger you just all right i'm gonna take it out on this guy. i'm gonna take it out on engraving it's got oh, watch what i do watch what i say about engraving and so they do that and i i, I they don't think about the long term because for me it's it's it's, it's whatever I, I, look when i see that it, it's, it's unfortunate i'm like oh that's that sucks but People will be people. But I, I, I just wish people would think about what they really got going on and and deal with that instead of trying to take it out on somebody else. Before we get into it, I got to give a special shout out to the newest team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy Michael B. Jr. Appreciate it. I almost want to say Michael B. Jordan, but I don't know if he watched the channel. He's probably busy making movies and all that stuff. But anyway. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate you becoming uh, a Team Keep It Clean patron. If any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron as well, you don't have to. And if you don't, it's okay. But if you would like to, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids. Now, um, we got some great questions as always. And the first one came from my guy, Lord Veli. He said, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. 
Uh, what's up, Rhoda? You and the family. And this is for the full time scout fans, LOL. So Lamar has never played with. What has he never played with in his entire career? Lamar has never played with a receiver overall more than an 80 to 82. Like Hollywood. All receivers are 72 to 77. Okay, so you must play a lot of Madden. A whole lot of Madden. Um, but I, I get what you're saying. And that was like a very simple way to, to break it down. Um, but anyway, I mean, you could have said elite receiver. You could have said, but I, I get it. Anyway, he said, uh, so in comparison to Herbert's, the Burroughs, the Hurts, coming up on contracts, even Brock Purdy, if he continues to elevate these teams, number three wide receivers, they are better than our number ones. With the Bengals, uh, they have T. Higgins, he's 83, and Tyler Boyd, 84. Whoa. I, I hope Madden don't got him rated like that. But even if we ain't talking Madden like real, like, like Higgins, high, way higher than that. Higgins would be like a, if we doing it the right way, Higgins would be like a 92. Like straight up, man. Like the. Tyler Boyd probably be at 84, but yeah, he can be 92. Uh, 49ers, McLeod, and uh, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, Chargers, then he talking about these guys' number three receivers. Now, Higgins is obviously not their number three, but Tyler Boyd is. Um, but uh, Guyton from the Chargers. Uh, Pascal from the Eagles. Uh, and he said, uh, and Ravens are offering a number a 77 number one overall in Bateman. And 73 overall in Duvernay at number two. Um, with Bateman. Bateman, he, he, Duvernay, he's not... A number one guy We know that uh, And that ain't no shot at Duvernay obviously But that's just not him uh, Bateman I think he can be that I think he got all the potential in the world to be that for sure um, It's just about Staying on the field and getting opportunities That's it That's it. And and then Bateman For Bateman the sky is the limit It really is um, He's shown he got the route running He got the speed uh, He catch. Yeah, he got the drops here and there so it, it happens I'm, I'm not overly concerned with Bateman's drops right now no um so I, I think he'll be fine uh but yeah he he's shown that like he he can make some stuff happen man um so let's see anyway he said so yeah if i was lamar you got to pay me premium no shorts because no quarterback in the league can carry a core like the ravens uh other than a mahomes and even that would be frustrating you see the season rogers has so yeah front office can't cheat the man i'm pretty sure if they sign a few 80s and 88 plus receivers to <laughs> To accompany Bateman and Dude, then you can give him less. But if he's carrying the team and suffering from the price of success, pay him. You know the love is real, as you say it is. Um, I mean, it's and that's that's part of it. But f to for for him to do everything that he's been asked to do, like you again, you got to be the team's leading passer. Obviously, you're the quarterback, so that's a given. But you got to be the team's leading rusher too. Every year, you got to be the team's leading rusher every single year. Um, so that's a lot And then again You ain't really been given much to work with overall um, So yeah go Get your money Get your money And th this is the time When you should be getting it uh, Whether it's going to come from the Ravens or not To be determined But we'll see um, And he also said uh, I wanted to add to that um, There are a lot of holes to fill on this team Half of the team including Lamar, Juice, uh, and Houston uh, key players to the franchise. On the bright side, most of our free agents are 29 and up vets on year-to-year -year deals. So my question is, if you were the GM, how would you build this team and would you go super young at these positions and create a new breed of Ravens but sign a proven, um, he said, proven quarterback like Derek Carr if Lamar is lost and get high ceiling rookies and two to three year players that would, the price would be low but they're on the verge of peaking and have three to four years to follow. Uh, or follow the Ravens' strategy of signing 32-year-old vets to be in this year to uh, this year-to-year -year contract and retirement seesaw that we have been on. Because yes, it gives the team a hey, let's make a run mentality for the OGs. But on the other hand, creates a Superman mentality where crucial mistakes happen. Guys think after a playoff loss next year may not be promising, and guys don't really uh, get locked in. Uh, at say a college where you know this is your brother uh, for three to four years, uh, and you build gorilla glue bonds. Hey, that's um, that's an interesting way how you put that. I, I like how you put that. Appreciate that. Anyway, he said, me per se, I go young and get the new blood and have faith uh, in, in the coaches and build players. Cause how how do you really know if your coaching staff is fire if you're getting an already pro already proven Hall of Fame caliber players? Take care. All right. So this was a loaded one. Um, but that's my guy, Lord Valley. He always send a loaded question. So I appreciate you. And I appreciate you being a, a, a patron. Been a patron for two months now. So um, with that being said, how would you build this roster? Uh, would you go really young? 
uh, or would you go uh, a lot of proven guys, uh, guys that may be close to retirement and whatnot? Um, I, for me, I think it would all depend on the position. It would all depend on the position. Uh, if Lamar's here, like that'd be my preference, keeping Lamar Jackson um, at quarterback. And as far as the receivers, y'all already know how I feel about that, so we ain't, we ain't even got to get into that part. Uh, we already got a Mark Andrews. Offensive line is a mix of youth and veterans because you got Linderbaum going in the second year. Uh, you got Zeitler, who's close to retirement. You got Morgan Moses, who might be close to retirement. You got uh, Ronnie Stanley. Um, and ho hopefully, like, this offseason will be the first healthy offseason for him in forever. So hopefully next year will be just great. Uh, left guard, what's it going to be? No clue. Um, so there's obviously going to be some youth there. But as far as, I guess it's more so defense, though. Because offense, like, yeah, we obviously need receivers. But offense, besides left guard, is pretty, well, obviously quarterback position not set. But they pretty much set. Because um, tight ends, you already got like <clears throat> 83 of them. Uh, and yeah. Running backs, you obviously got those guys. Well, for now, I know there have been a lot of chatter that something could happen with Gus and as a backup running back. And I think they said his cap is like five mil. So, ooh, ooh we're going to see what happens with Gus, man. Because, ooh, yeah, you know the business, baby. Um, But, yeah. Uh, so, I, I would do like a, a mix. <clears throat> um, As far as like cornerback, uh, you got Marlon Humphrey. Uh, You got Jalen Alma Davis, Pepe Williams. Um, I'd probably sign a veteran there uh, Not one that's close to retirement um, You brought back Worley I would really see what he's about It could be one of them things where he could be one of them surprises Because uh, again, he balled When he played last year, he balled I was like, hold up now, I, I wouldn't forget that Um, But I would sign a veteran there uh, as Safety, safety you already said I'd bring back uh, Geno Stone Probably trade Chuck Clark um, cause you got Kyle Hamilton, it could be Geno Stone, and then Marcus Williams, and with Kyle Hamilton, I, I wonder how they're gonna play him this year. Uh, and I know that's not part of your question, but I wonder how they're gonna play him this year because he was obviously just in the box last year. He ain't really covered deep like that. Um, so and that was that was Chuck Clark and Marcus Williams' job, and then Geno Stone and Chuck Clark's job when Marcus Williams was out. But and Brandon, no, not Brandon Stevens, not this year. But I wonder how they're gonna play him. Like I wonder if. Uh well, well I guess we'll see but anyway um safety was said uh, talked we talked about corner linebacker uh with Patrick Queen we'll see what happens with him um but I if I I would probably I would probably keep Patrick Queen I I, I would just run it back this year um because I mean Roquan's already paid I would run it back this year uh and then I will probably pick up his fifth year option uh but then. I would probably trade him next off season, uh, so they would have that fifth year option. The team, whatever we team we traded him to, because uh, I know I wouldn't resign him as well. Um, and defensive line, because uh, Calais Campbell, yeah, he can still do his thing. Um, Justin Houston too. I just feel like it's not it's not a good idea. Like having veterans is important. They provide leadership both on and off the field. But I feel like it's, it's scary territory to be so reliant on them, especially like aging veterans. Like a veteran, a technical veteran is somebody with four or more years of them playing in the NFL. But the Ravens veteran, Ravens veterans are different because, uh, you know, I know. But anyway, um, I just feel like it, it will be scary territory uh, having to rely on a Calais Campbell. And this is like obviously for real life too. Like right now, having to rely on the Calais Campbell, having to rely on Justin Houston. Uh, so hopefully David Ajabo, he can take that next step. With Justin Houston, um, if he wanted to play another year and we could work out something where it was decent, I said, okay, cool, come back for a, a one-year deal, super low cap hit, whatever. Um, Calais Campbell, it'd be the same thing, but I'm really telling my young guys, like, look, those guys could come back, but it's on y'all now, man. Matt BK, Travis Jones, if we kept Michael Pierce, I know he's not a young guy, but he's not an aging veteran. Uh, but he, he, I know he dealt with a lot of injuries, though. Um, but I'm telling Broderick Washington, I'm like, hey, y'all, it's it, you up now. Uh, and as far as the pass rushes, Bowser, Ajabo, uh, Away, like, 
it's it's y'all it's y'all time now. So y'all y'all got to step it like all the way up and more. And the next question came from a newer team keep it clean patron. It came from my guy Jay. Is it Jay or Jai? To me, it looks like Jai because it's J A I. But let me know. Uh, he said, "Hey, what's going on, Engraven? I hope you and your fam are good. But I got a question for you uh, that may be a bit of a reach. Now, you dropped this on February thirteenth, and now it's February nineteenth. But anyway, he said." Uh, what if Andy Reid was shouting out Eric Bieniemy uh, just so he could have more of a push to be a new head? Co oh, the new head coach of KC, and Andy Reid plans on retiring. Well, they did. Um, they shut that down. I think what is his name, Brett Veach, whatever the GM of the, the Chiefs' name is. He said that Andy Reid ain't going nowhere. He ain't retiring. He said he was like, oh, I probably talked to him more than anybody besides his wife. Like man, like I'm thinking like man, go talk to somebody else. Go have a conversation with your own wife. Anyway, um, but yeah, he uh, he said that that all them rumors about Andy Reid possibly retiring, he said it was false. So that that shut that down. Uh, and he said that will certainly put a fork in our plans. Well, I guess the Ravens were like, you know what? No, they they put a fork in their own uh, Eric Bieniemy plans, uh, and they went with they ended up going with Munkin. So we hope that um it, everything goes really really good with uh Ty Munkin and that he just. He really kills it. Oh man, we always talk about how timing is everything. We were literally editing the video. We just started editing. Then we got an email from our guy Oscar, who's uh he's been a team keep it clean patron for two years. Woo! Appreciate it, Oscar. Thank you. Anyway, he said, uh, "Good morning. I have an off-season question for you. If there was any rule you could change or add for the next season, what would it be?" Ooh, a rule. Ah, uh, mm. Um. Oh wow. I think to. Rev I I think to review like, I I just wish there was like more legitimacy in um. But anyway, the reviewing penalties, the challenging penalties, reviewing penalties. That that would be one, and also I would tell them to stop that um, stop that rule where you uh you blow the whistle. Like if it looks like it's a fumble, it looks like it's like questionable. Like maybe it's a fumble, maybe it's incomplete. Just let the play play out. Let 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 the play play out. Don't blow the whistle. Don't blow the play dead. Let the play play out. Because a lot of times when that happens, it does end up being like a turnover or something. And a team like that scored a defensive touchdown, it's like, oh, man, they got it taken away. They still get the ball back, but they had that touchdown taken away. And that could change a game. So that, that's what it would be for me. He said, in my opinion, they should change the way first downs are measured. The league is highly technological with microchips and balls and player jerseys. And we are still measuring something so critical. <laughs> So critical, like a first down with a chain. <laughs> you, you ain't lying, man. Seems completely outdated to me. Ooh, sounds like something that. Anyway, I guess the NFL needs to update their philosophy, huh? Anyway, he said, uh, "What do you think overall as well? Yeah, everything is good, man. Ah, yeah, that that would be a good one though. That 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 would be a good. That's a funny one, but that that would be a good one. Um, but yeah, they got so much te technology, man. Like they could do anything, man. They could do anything, but." Um, I guess they, they just don't want to give up that control to computers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta make it. Shout out to Graven.